Hello Year 6, soon to be Year 7. My name is Mr Fox, I'm the Head of English here at Beckett Key School. Um, what I'd like to do today for my mini lesson in English is to take you through some poetry uh, with particular focus on a, a different approach to poetry. So what do we think of when we hear the word poetry? Well for some people um, it's quite negative initially. Their experiences of poetry might be that these are works of literature that are only composed by clever and creative people uh, and they can't write anything like that. Um, some people think it's restricted and reserved for the likes of Wordsworth and Keats and Coleridge. Some people say that poems and poetry in particular talks about too many serious issues like love or death and, and that they have no reference points or experiences of those so it can alienate them. Some people think that poetry always has to rhyme some find it very boring. Some would say to you that they only study poetry in order to pass an exam. And others would say, well, we prefer reading books or watching plays. Poetry doesn't appeal to us. However, I think we have forgotten a few fundamental things about poetry. It can be fun. It can be humorous. It can be a release and a relief from the chaos of the world. It can be playful. So we can take words and we can experiment with them on the page, the way they look, the way they sound, multiple meanings. Rather than obsess over things like rhyme and meter, we should have a, an experiment with words and what we can achieve there. Poetry doesn't have to be about serious issues the whole time. And it can be an expression, a random expression of how you're feeling at that moment. So if you want to write about your hamster or queuing for a bus or eating a bowl of ice cream, because you want to, then then write about it. Um, there are no restrictions, no barriers. And a little bit like art, in the same way you'd place paint or pastel or ink on a page to create something, there isn't always a plan there, uh, but what you get is a form of art, and it requires a bit of creativity, a bit of spontaneity, um, but most importantly, anyone can do it. So a type of poetry I would like to introduce you to, maybe some of you have seen this already, it's known as blackout poetry. And it was a type of poetry um, that was made popular by the man you can see on screen here, a guy called Austin Cleon, who's from New York. Um, sorry, he's not from New York, he's from Austin in Texas, but the New York Times uh, listed him as one of their best-selling authors. Um, and he's also the author of uh, a book called Newspaper Blackout, which is a collection of poems, as you can read here, that have been made by redacting, or taking away, uh, scribbling out, erasing newspaper print. And what's left on the page, what you don't um, scribble out, what you don't black out, uh, becomes your poem. And his books have been translated into dozens of languages and have sold over a million copies worldwide. So that's uh, the front cover of his book there. And it says on the front, instead of starting with a blank page, poet Austin Cleon grabs the New York Times um, and a permanent marker and eliminates the words he doesn't need. I'll show you what this looks like. So you can see here what he's done is he's taken some newspaper articles and with a black marker, he's eliminated most of the words on the page and what he's left with are words which for him comprises poetry. So the first one reads, follow me, I have many maps. And the second one says quite simply, too little art and so much time. So what we've got here is some quite thought provoking short pieces that have been comprised and created simply by crossing out other text. If you take a look at these two examples here, how to be exceptional. The first step is to stop trying. And that's quite a philosophical um, statement. That's, that really does get you thinking. Um, and that has been, like I say, created by just eliminating um, other words on the page. To the right of that, uh, nothing is like I think it is. I never imagined anger is the machine that kills. Now that is creativity. That is purist it's simple it's taken from a newspaper cutting but like i say he's eliminated the words he doesn't want to use and those um that small selection of words there creates a very powerful poem 
You'll notice a lot of this is quite visual as well, so it's very creative. Here we've got one, and you can see how it's been mapped out quite literally, excuse the pun, with the waves on the page. He saved the day, um, and then uh, they were married. Now the pirates are after his organs. There's a clever play on the sound of words. You can see how he's um, separated the word organ and the next word beginning with Z to create organs. Um, there are no rules to this. You can experiment, you can be creative. Um, the words are on your page and what you do and how you manipulate things uh, can then result in, in your own personalized poem. All I was thinking at the end of the day is what it's like to be a robot. So we don't have to have anything serious. We don't have, have to have anything concerning life and death. Maybe that is quite a thought provoking question. What is it like to be a robot? Um, is there a broader message there um, about life, about the human condition? So here are some uh, tips for creating your own blackout poetry. Um, they can be created using anything. Newspaper, articles work best, pages of old books. Now, I don't want people going around um, needlessly defacing books. Um, if it's an old book, you're going to throw it out anyway. If the pages are all torn, then they're ideal. Or magazine articles as well. Uh, you'll need a marker pen. And what you will do is you'll, you'll black out the text that you don't want. Uh, and it will leave you with um, this seemingly random collection of words that create your poem. Um, blackout poems can be random, they can be funny and sometimes absurd, but that is the beauty of them. And no two people's poems will ever be the same. So you need to deconstruct before you reconstruct. So scan the page, keep an eye out for words that intrigue or interest you. Uh, you might initially circle those with a pencil. Um, um, if your eye has been drawn to certain words and they have an impact on you, there'll be a reason for that. So once all your circled words are on a separate piece of paper, I, I find this is helpful. You can list those in the order they appear and you can start to think about um, the course of your poem. Um, you can then eliminate the words you don't want and even endings of words, beginnings of words. It's up to you what you black out. Um, do that with a marker pen. And then think about uh, putting the text on a page um, and you could even, uh, as a final stage in this, add illustrations or designs to your page. Um, obviously being careful not to draw over the words that you want in your final poem. Follow me with the things that look like this. And these are quite amazing pieces of art, never mind poetry. And the two shouldn't necessarily be mutually exclusive. So the person here has written, Shivering brassy moonlight, ignite the dark night, lonely, haunted, end of the day. Um, again, very moving, very powerful. This person has graphically represented the moonlight uh, against the backdrop of their poem. Uh, this second entry, he felt comfortable as he floated to the sudden tide of the room. And again, that's been represented with the waves in the background. Think about the words that have been left there. You can see some of the original prints. This person's decided to select those words as a powerful message. You and I are tied to the stars and we're going to fly together, baby. Again, some of this blackout poetry, when it really took off uh, five or six years ago, you'll, you'll find lots of examples on the internet um, depicted graphically like this. Um, again, only a few words on the page. But the power of, of the written word there, the printed word, um, is there for all to see. Um, what about this one here? We've got home. Um, we find in the grain of the heart. So you've got a handful of words there that carry so much power and meaning. Um, and that's, as you can see underneath, taken from quite a large chunk of text. So I'm going to set you a challenge. I uh, hope you'll, you'll accept this. I've got the first page of chapter one of um, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. How would you use that um, to create your own piece of blackout poetry? If that doesn't take your fancy, I've got the opening page of Michael Morpurgo's novel, The War Horse, 
Um, and what I've decided to do here, just to give an example, is to take this and try my own uh, blackout poem. So this is what I ended up with. In fact, if I go back and show you the original text, um, you could have a read of that. And then this is what I ended up with, having redacted some of these words. Um, this is my poem, and I've put an image over the top. Confusion and dark terror were evident in her eye. Slightly haunting, slightly troubling, um, but that's something I've um, had a go at with the blackout poetry. So maybe give it a go yourselves. Find a copy of a newspaper article, magazine article, or even an old book, and give some blackout poetry a go. So enjoy, be creative, and we'll see you soon. Take care.